not the minority or the majority telling the flag what to do and what not to do. The rules are there already. Do you understand? So we would see exactly how the clerk would approach. But in 2005, yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't what you were saying. No, no, no. no that's what, that's in 2005, no, no, it wasn't like what, that. No, no, that's what I it wasn't what you were saying. Same thing. No, almost invariably, it is the clerk. Uh -huh. who takes yeah, but, but the president of 2005 is against you, Sky. It wasn't which like one, that. Which part of it? The 2005. The protests were taken to the sea. No, no, what I'm saying, no, no, but who was in charge? I think that's the, the clerk. Thing. It's always the clerk. Yeah, sure, no, the clerk the is there. Yeah, yeah. The so, electoral commission is there to supervise, to yeah, look yeah. at what exactly yeah. is happening. That's no, how I think. Not, yeah, not yeah, yeah, the contention here, yeah, yeah, let's just declare. The contention here is what mood will the voting happen? Will the person go alone to the ballot box, take the sheet, fill it up, and put it in there? Or would they allow him to bring the ballot sheet to his seat? Can I answer this question? Yes, please. We are the masters of our own procedures. But that's the point. So we can decide anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. said that this is how we do it. And this is, this is not from Ghana. It's Britain. It's Must both sides agree how they do it? No. You are doing yours. I'm doing mine. No. Well, well, so just be clear. So you're saying that the MPP side can decide that for us. Uh, give us our papers. No. Parliament. Parliament. The clerk would have been uh, would have agreed with the, with the leadership. Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. This is what we're going to do. Okay. We'll go on and do it. it but what if there's no agreement? There would be agreement one way or the other. There will be a voting tonight. Listen. No, I'm saying, what if NDC... No, just what what would they do? No, they, no, excuse says, me. I'm uh, saying that. Uh, so, yeah. already, it's very clear yeah. there is no consensus. Uh -huh. So, what if the minority or NDC size decides that we prefer voting where you move to the ballot well, box alone? Apparently, they are a bit more apprehensive than we are. So, they are going to resort to exactly what you are talking yes, about. Yes, I'm asking. Yeah, in so, that case, what happens? So, there is agreement. No, if there's side. no agreement. No, 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 you're not, you're not. What if there's no agreement? No, no, I'm telling you that they are a little bit more apprehensive than us. So they are going to resort to what they are they prefer more than we are. Why? They are worried that people will vote for. But more apprehensive than they, they, why? they are going to. Well, I don't know about the why, but they want to also be sure about their numbers. The same way they want to be sure okay, about Okay, do you want so to give me an NDC MP to you, ask whether it's true? Or which one? You get to I'm, I'm talking to my producer, not you. Are you okay? <laughs> what is true that is, is it true that, that the NDC is apprehensive? Because it's Seems as if they are very clear in their minds that they want babbing. They, they want babbing. Yes. Yeah, they want babbing if that's the person they are going to present. Of course, they won't present somebody they don't want. Yes. They? You know, so whoever they are presenting, I sitting here wouldn't know. Yeah. But if it is babbing, they clearly want him. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But there's but another that's, question. Okay, go on. No, go on. What is that? You are the other question to? was what's on the ballot paper? Uh, is it names? Names, yeah. So we will know. By now they know. Whoever wants it, the nomination. So no, would no, have no been photographs, given. just no, names. No, no, I think okay. names. I didn't see for And then the who's on top? Huh? Is it yeah, my that's friend? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an interesting no, one. No, 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 the, the most important part of it, and I'm, I'll tell you the story about the veteran of ministers. And uh, Sky, you might know this. When the Rawlings said that uh, he had won the elections in 96, and therefore the ministers that he had used in 92, he wants to carry on. This should how far the court didn't go so what happened in 1997 vetting and uh, by the appointments committee vetting is part of the so they could have decided to just use a voice so in 97 they were not vetted the routine wow. were not vetted so crime paper comes and as many as are in favor say I so
We, we spent a lot of time talking about tonight, mm. but I think a lot of viewers would want to know, particularly from you now, okay? So here we are, you have friends on both sides, but it appears this is going to be more acrimonious than more previous parliaments, or, or are we buying into the hype? I.e., what type of relationship would exist between the two sides yeah. from tomorrow? No, 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 uh, it's, it's quite important. I think we are all alive to our responsibilities. I mean, uh, the days when we had a 63, 64, 69, whatever the majority was, it was huge. I mean, uh, so it was allowed. We had liberty, so we could take it, you know, uh, we'll do the shouting and then all of that. I mean, we always had the numbers. Well, a minority can always have their say. Majority will do what they want. I think it's uh, reality is um, it's, it's, it's hitting. Mm. Uh, nobody thinks that's going to be the situation going forward. So uh, you are right. Um, we, rationality is going to uh, play a critical role in uh, what happens going forward. Uh, we have friends on the other side. Um, you see, something that you should be cautious about, all along you, you get to see the the fighting, the tug of war, quote unquote, that goes on in, 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 in the house. You don't quite get to know the bit, the many situations that mm. um, there's a rapprochement, we agree, and then uh, we'll get things going. Uh, and then we're going to have, uh, to have uh, quite a lot of that going forward. Um, there will be, I think uh, sanity would absolutely break up. Uh, in, in but in terms of the practicality uh, of the ministers, yes. we know that half of the ministers must come from parliament. Yes. And we know that the way the executive works yeah. practically they will not always be here so do you we, we, people contemplate a situation where in certain on certain days there'll be more people on the, on the other side, side than on this side no. yeah. How, but, but that's know, why i said that the sanity would, would break up well, i mean there, there, won't, there won't be any difficulty there will be the odd situation where the minority and for that matter the NDC would want to have their way that is where the challenge will be thrown out um, but i i the, the, the reality will come up i suspect that going forward just like we've done in many many instances before um the situation that we come to um where we agreed on many 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 issues we're going to agree on many issues more than we disagree and on the occasions that um, we do not particularly agree and we might want to take a vote i think uh, i think the the what the so you, you, you did a, you did a the, program uh, last we crossed the bridge when we get there where you um, suggested that you strongly believe there was going to be a, a smaller number of ministers and you you explain how the president was thinking of merging the ministries is the president thinking about this in doing that this idea that he doesn't want to deprive he doesn't want to have too many ministers because he's going to weaken parliament well i don't know what the president thinks but i'm just looking at it from an analyst viewpoint and i think the mpp is going to be uh, as, a, as a ruling executive they're going to have a lot of difficulty in this parliament especially when it comes to voting mm -hmm. we're already hearing that they want to adopt the uh, process which occurs in the uk parliament where they have days for voting and so when the debate is done today, maybe the debate on public universities bill is conducted on Monday, the 15th of March, and ends on 21st of March, the vote on the public universities bill would actually be taken in June. So they do that uh, as, far as, as far as the laws allow. So they do the, all the votes. So one Friday is uh, voting on the debates that have occurred over the last two months. So typically the British Parliament, they will start at 9 p.m., they end somewhere 3 a.m. So on voting, the event, uh, the business committee sets up, today is voting. So speaker comes and says that he's reporting from the third reading, actually, of the public universities bill or the waste management bill. So he comes and says, public universities bill, debate ended, so and so, can we take the votes, voice votes? And they take all the votes. You need to do that because you have to have it when ministers are available so that you have your numbers. And as you know, in the British Parliament, every minister is a member of the parliament. So often they are not there. This is what the MPP is going to suffer at this at this juncture in this parliament. They have to make sure that people who have traveled, whether ministers, whether chairman of committees, you know, you, they have to be there when the vote is taken. Because as you're saying, there's going to be a lot more occasions when the NDC may be more. Because if 20 of your people have traveled, and that happens all the time. Even if two, in, in the circumstance, even if three have traveled, you, you slip into the minority as soon as three travel. So they will have to devise a mechanism where wow. voting occurs on particular days. I had a, a joke where it was said that whenever a minister is traveling, he should go with the ranking member of the relevant committee. So if you are a trade minister, 
Carry your opposition member, member of parliament. With you. you travel with the ranking member. So one, one. And then you still maintain your majority of one or two. So, but wow. if you are a minister who's not a member of parliament, uh, say you are the, another minister who's not a member of parliament, then when you take the ranking member, you have deprived the NDC of it. So all sorts of uh, models are being designed to do this. As, as I keep saying, I'm excited because it shows that Ghana's democracy the, and the, the voice of the is, people is working. We, we, we don't know the thinking behind MPP maintaining Professor Michael Quay. With the situation you described that is facing this parliament, is he the right person to manage this very complicated situation? I, I think so. I, I really think so. And um, at the beginning of the contest, there were rumors that uh, his lordship Justice Doche was being recommended. That would have been actually fantastic for uh, Ghana's democracy. This is not the first time we're having a Supreme Court judge. But a judge in the mode of Justice Doche, who is so distinguished on the bench, would have been great. The only concern for those of us who thought Michael Quay should be better for the situation is that you need a leader who understands parliament thoroughly. Either he's been member of parliament before, he's sat on committees before, he's been uh, uh, the deputy speaker before, or he's the incumbent speaker. Because you're going to have a lot of, you know, because parliament is a master of his own procedure, and president also works in parliament. When situations come up, you can either go to the president or you can generate a new procedure. To do that, you're dealing with a minority leader and a majority leader. Uh, to do that, I think you need somebody who can say that, oh, at the business committee that in the last session, this is how we did it, and so we can do it again. All together, design a new procedure. If you have two hostile uh, uh, leaders, minority and majority, both of whom have numbers, as it is, you want a speaker who is strong. And when you get to the partisan places, as they say, you want a speaker who can say, the eyes have it, as, as some of Oko's Apo, supporters Apo, what is the case I'm on? He's suggesting compromise and consensus. But again, Oko so is, you prefer Oko is the person for that. more conciliatory. No. Oko is both. You see, here is Inu Safuseni and uh, Raz Mubarak, both of whom were singing Oko's praises as a, as a speaker. Of course, Oko had difficulties uh, at Haruna. the beginning. Haruna Idrisu had difficulties with him. It would appear from yesterday's press conference, even the body language, that that, that has been by and large resolved. Inu Safuseni was very bold to talk about Michael Kwe in complimentary terms. And when you are speaker uh, elected by a political party, even the venerable Justice D.F. Annan, he had his own clashes with J.H. Mensah, even Justice D.F. Annan. So you will always have a speaker who has clashes. But for minority members uh, to come, significant minority members like Inu Safuseni, to talk about Okwe in complimentary terms, I think Michael Kwe presents that complex um, personality that is required Sorry, to do there was, there was There was Freddie Blaise's name, there was Justice Doche, and then there was Okwe. You seem surprised when Okwe's name finally came through. I, I, I think sure. the MPP have their own reasons for going with Okwe. I mean, no doubt, Professor Okwe is distinguished in many levels. But if you ask me, given the numbers, the closeness of the numbers, the fact that the person presiding would have to sit long hours do you understand mm. and the kind of the final mpp bus has come exactly acrimony we should expect mm. i honestly do not believe yeah. that professor michael Kwe in his present state has the energy the drive and to manage this to manage the rancor because, uh, to, because look i mean you saw it yesterday i respect the professor but you see it is obvious that they, uh, let's say speaking they go tire out exactly the MPs go tire out exactly no, but let, let me you guys uh, but into this well, are you assuming that he is the person that we are nominating no, we are, we are you, you, for your nominee oh you, you don't you, you, well i'm asking you well, announced, well, that's what has been announced, yeah. officially announced yeah. in the letter that he is exactly the so you, but you, you see you but that, that, let me make the point here that yes the fact that the national executives of the MPP have gone to say that this is the person we want does not mean that necessarily that's the person who wants. Because they don't decide per the rules of the House and the Constitution, they don't decide who gets to be Speaker. It is a member... Yeah, of course, but they propose. Exactly. So the, the, the President was there, we are told they've agreed. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So if Honorable Katie Amon is saying, how do I know that... No, but actually, you are right. I think I'm wrong. Uh, the name was put up the by was the General Secretary officially. And the National so, so Executive think, agreed. Uh, exactly. So you're saying that... I'm wrong. It's not even the competence, it's more the energy to deal with the level of... Exactly, because, I mean, look, 
a, it's a difficult conversation to have because Professor Michael Quay is no longer the Professor Michael Quay that we, we saw when he was running for the flag bearer position of the MP, M, M, MPP. Became a minister, became a high commissioner, became a member of parliament, served as, you know, second deputy. I think we are comfortable with him. No, 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 I have to make my point. Yeah. Yeah. I am a citizen yeah. of the Republic of Ghana. You are a panelist on this show. And I'm a you panelist on this show. Exactly. So, you know, we need people holding public office to be able to bring their position and influence to bear on what happened. This is the House of Parliament. Now, you need a speaker who would read through every single bill that is before the House and make important decisions and directions as and when necessary. Now, we should be honest with ourselves. Whether looking at Professor O'Quinn now, he would have the energy. Oscar, is the speaker's role. I thought the speaker was more a referee. That's why we say mm -hmm. the leadership of the house isn't even the speaker. So he's more just making sure the rules are being applied. So if you talk about reading through no, bills, so, is that his job? No, so when, when matters, when bills are brought to the house, yeah. they first of all will be submitted to the clerk at table. Yes. You understand? All these things will be brought to the attention of the speaker. When the speaker is deciding, it is his ruling which would determine whether or not a particular provision gets to be ultimately part of the... So that means exactly. he's he reading on the... Exactly. He can rule that... No, no, no. 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 No, no, the Constitution says that if you are bringing a bill that has implications for the public press, you understand? The House is not to entertain it. This matter came up before in this House. The Speaker intervened and said, that, look, my reading of the Constitution is that you cannot bring that bill. The moment you bring it, there will be a charge on the public press. So at that point, the Speaker terminated what would have been a progressive move to expand the role of MPs in the House and wean the Parliament of the Executive, which would always sponsor bills. So you're saying that a Speaker's role can influence things beyond simply being a referee. Exactly. He can actively truncate debate. He can stifle progressive legislature exactly. on the example. basis of his reading of the, Let the me rules. give you another example. When the, um, the Commission of Inquiry that investigated the Brazil scandal when they finished their report, in fact, before they finished their report, what happened was that there was a vote in this house. The minority sought to want to create a way of investigating what had happened. Then Honorable Mahama Yariga came to Parliament and was on his feet and announces that there is an executive decision to set up a committee to investigate this particular matter so as to take out parliament entirely from the entire process if my memory says me correctly the honorable doaja who intervened and said no you can't do that because what you are doing effectively is to oust the jurisdiction of parliament in dealing with matters like this which it has the power and authority to deal with of course subsequently you know the the, the executive set up his commission which investigated the matter what i'm saying is that it is the case that the speaker is not to descend into the arena of conflict between the two sides. But the speaker provides a critical leadership that guides what gets to be part and what does not get to be part. If you disagree with the ruling of the speaker, you file a substantive motion to challenge the position of the speaker. And where a vote is taken and the speaker's position is defeated, that's an entirely different matter. Yeah, where, where I try to differ with him, I mean, uh, to a good extent, I agree with uh, the, the, the core of what he said. Where I disagreed was when he said, when uh, in the process of making a bill, it is how the speaker rules, uh, which in the end, uh, culminates in the act. That is completely untrue. Uh, when there is a constitution stage of any bill, the question as to what becomes part of the bill going forward into the act is put to the members of the house. So the speaker would invariably ask as many as those who agree on this proposition say I, and when we agree that cross A is A, B, C, D, it goes in and not what the speaker um, sits back there and as he says. Uh, and I think you are misunderstanding. No, no, my I haven't misunderstood. No, no, you, you have. That is where you <laughs> did the point you originally made. But I've agreed that to the extent that you came back to put it the way you are. Um, 
for example, the, example uh, the, the, the issue that you raised as to whether a particular bill could be passed as a private member's motion when the speaker referred to the constitutional provisions on the financial implications for the, the state. Yes, you are right. The other example that you stated when we wanted to uh, investigate the bank branding and those things. Yes, speaker, of course, does some ruling, and that is true. Again, you make the point that his uh, decision can only be challenged by a substantive motion. That's all fine. I am particularly concerned about the issue of when we consider bills. The speaker plays practically no role in uh, the process of the law. Panel. But his argument is that he believes yes. the, the type of parliament we have requires somebody more vigorous to use the term. Yeah. But we're suggesting that this one is not very vigorous. Or he, he appears, he, I mean, that's the Mr. Sisa said Mr. Okoye is a bit old. Is he's 76 uh, years old. Uh, and you. he doesn't that's seem view, as Mr. Mr. Sky. physically. I mean, Parliament is very, they, they, they meet long hours. It's, mm. it's hard work. And I mean, I came here in the afternoon, I was even tired. What are these guys doing? So he doesn't believe that the level of rigor and vigor required, Mr. Okoye or Professor Okoye, would be in the best position to do it. Okay. Uh, we'll get a seat for the venerable Avoka to join us. Okay. He'll join us here. Yeah. But Paul, yes, you have yeah. the floor. Okay. So I, I think I want to go back a little bit and uh, uh, start from where you started. I've been praising Ghana's democracy tonight. However, uh, there's something that is beginning uh, to occur that I'm not quite uh, sure that we should encourage. This issue about uh, nomination of the speaker, we have seen it happen so many times. This year's own has been has been a bit quite direct from the party. Okay. The constitution says that the speaker shall be nominated by the majority. No. This issue about no, no, no. nominated yeah, that the member house elect yeah, yeah. makes a nomination. That yeah. motion shall okay. be seconded without a debate. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's, any member at all. No, no, you don't you don't know where I'm going. So take your time. No, no, no. You are you are mistaking the position. Yeah, but yeah, whilst you are at it, there's some noise on the floor. So, so we, we, cross, no, we may cross over soon. soon.
the law has to be understood. Uh, that provision is it for a member of parliament who has been sworn in or a member of parliament who has been elected? Your microphone has been no, but a doctor by a member of parliament, he's been elected and he's coming to parliament to be sworn in, so he can't obstruct. Okay, guys, let's hold on. So, if you are just going to obstruct, that will be unconstitutional. Did a report for you earlier suggesting that the MP elect for Asin North had been served a, a, an injunction preventing him from being sworn in? Mr. Savoka, an experienced member of parliament, uh, this is your fourth term. Sixth term, he went absent one term. Sixth term, saying that as far as he's aware, the MP James Jachik has not been served and therefore will be sworn in today. And therefore, they have 137, as does MPP. He's also saying that the independent candidate could change his mind. So they are sitting on the right because anything can happen. And until the for me, that MP tells us where he's going to be and physically goes to sit there, they could be the majority. So this is my understanding of what you're saying so far. Exactly so. Amazing. And, and, and let me add legally that... Um, if a high court uh, had uh, imposed an injunction on a single of MP, I think that that's a miscarriage of justice. Uh, it's unfortunate if he did that. Other courts on the same uh, or similar facts have declined to grant an injunction. Because nature hates a vacuum, and the cause also hates a vacuum. So, granting an injunction against him is depriving the citizens of Asin North of uh, parliamentary representation. I thought that courts are advised to let MPs stay in court, I mean, stay in parliament until the final decision of the case. And if he is uh, disqualified by the court, then he leaves and then the right fellow is uh, taken, or the processes are not taken for somebody to be elected. But for them to have elected somebody declared by electoral commission a competently elected, and the court to say that um, I seen for I mean I seen enough MP, I mean the people should not have a parliamentary representation. For, for how long can they be up? Can they not be represented in parliament? Um, if we are taking a cue from other judgments or rulings of similar courts, uh, I think that he would have advised himself to grant that injunction. And I think that it is incumbent on the chief justice to give a, a, a practice directive. That as far as these cases are concerned, high court judges should restrain themselves from granting injunction and allow the processes um, but, to stay there until the final determination of the case. Now, Otherwise, it's a miscarriage of as, justice. As we're speaking now, if the clerk has been shown the the injunction, yes, will he be minded then to prevent him from taking part in this? The clerk cannot prevent him. The clerk has to officially also hand over the document to the MP and say that this is the document saying that you are, and then that be served to pass it on to you. So the MP has to be served. I don't know. I don't know this. He part. has to be. So, so we need, Yes. You the came MP in four versus five. Right. Alas, so we need MP <laughs> for MP elect now by MP for somebody has north. Been. Have you okay. seen James uh, Jachi, the MP elect for uh, Asin North? Is he here? Please give him the mic. Is he, is he, I, don't, I want to. So we just came from the, the chamber. Is he here with you? Was he in the bus? We are respecting the majority of seats that the people of Ghana gave us. We know we won 110, 137 seats so far, even as we uh, seek to add Techiman uh, to it and other constituencies as well. So we came with 137 members of parliament so elected the by the people of Ghana. We he's came with 137 members of parliament. So you'll be sworn in? We came with 137 to be sworn in. Wow. Well, I have been here for a little bit more longer than I thought uh, we welcomed. Do I have to take no, a I, I want you me? to be here a bit because I wanted you to comment on what you just heard. Uh, okay. Y um, no, I'm, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, no matters, no, legal matters like this, one is very careful. Um, and there has been a decision by a court of, um, that's what they say, competent jurisdiction. That's what KT, I want to sit out here and start revisiting or discussing those issues. The uh, court says, well, it's been injuncted, this injunction. Do not present yourself as a member elect. Don't go in there. That is the order of the court. What happens thereafter, I cannot um, uh, discuss. But I, I really don't want to get involved in this. I just wanted to know yeah. your, 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 your understanding of what 
the implication of what the court has said means. Well, the court, what the court has said, that means simple. that he can't come it's here. Simple. It's simple. It's, 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 I understand right. That's what the court has said. That uh, people went to court, um, the complainants went to court, and then they complained about the fact that um, he has um, two citizenship. Dual citizenship. Dual, the dual citizenship. You see, we recall the case of our very good friend, Adebu Sakandi of uh, Blessed Memory. That's what happened to him. I mean, it was alleged by people of Boko, some people from Boko, that um, he contested the election. That is dangerous because that no, is going no, into the substance no, of the. No, 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 no. Not no, even no, that. So no, 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 an injunction has been. No, no, no. Facts, and facts have been given. I think well, it's that's so why I thought I wasn't going to get, get My, The get only question there. I yeah. asked was yeah. that. As a lawyer, yeah. the injunction has been granted. What That's does right. it mean? Yeah, that sure. means that and he so can't I'm saying come that here we have precedent. We have precedent in this. It happened to Adibu that uh, he appeared to have been a citizen of both Ghana and Britain. In the end, uh, it came up that truly he was, and we knew the consequence. So no, I no, no, no. don't want to get into this. The court is rude that uh, he couldn't. My understanding is, is that if the court says <clears throat> you can't, you respect uh, We all respect the law. He would come in here, and I think my senior colleague, uh, actually, is my senior. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the same thing, but senior. Um, no, senior. You are coming six. I'm going six. The I'm same. Going six. Oh, same. <laughs> I'm <laughs> but he missed that bar. one. He missed that. He would have been seven if he had come the other one. Yeah. You see, he makes a point that well, if he is not aware, he comes claiming that he is not aware. The clerk might want to serve him or show him the documents. Uh, I say, quote and unquote, purporting to come from the court. If it is a genuine item, the real McCoy, then my understanding is that he can be sworn in because he has been injuncted from presenting himself. Um, to this place, yeah, from, uh, let me comment on this uh, mm -hmm. second day case for yeah. Yes, it's your adjoining constituency. Yes, I mean, so you know a bit about it. We are in the same Boku Central area, Boku yes. Central, Boku West, formerly and whatnot. Yes. But in that case, um, second day was not restrained from participating in the court proceedings. He was in court throughout. He was in parliament throughout until the final decision. That's what I'm saying that the, the current high court on this matter, uh, with the greater respect, um, is is not respecting to the tradition okay. or the pra practice of the high court right. on this, on this matter. Thank you very much. And, uh, thank, he had, thank you very much, Casey. It is Hamon. unfair yes. yeah. for other high court judges to say that you go, we cannot deprive them, I mean, the constituency of a representation, and another high court is not say, okay, I can deprive, I see no people from representation. For how long would that injunction be in play? Suppose it is going to be there for six months, one year. Mm. Doesn't mean that I see no people have no right to be represented in parliament when the merits of the case have not been determined. That was a miscarriage of justice. Thank you, because I can take leave of you yes, now. Please. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'll hand my micro. Uh, yes, I, I want to now bring in. So I'm doing a bit of substitution. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very this much. This is still the point of view. Extended edition. I'm here. I haven't it's gone anywhere. I'm not in London. <laughs> to uh, 11 p.m. We understand that parliament will be dissolved at midnight, after which the eighth parliament will be sworn in. I have a new panel now, but Sky and Paul are still here. I have the MP elect for Damongo and Deputy Chief of Staff, the Honorable, or soon to be Honorable, <laughs> uh, uh, Samuel Abu Jinapo. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Good evening, sir. It's good to have you. <laughs> Excellent. I'm very happy to be here. So, I don't know. You, have you been to the chamber or you just brought? No, you, I haven't been to the you chamber. You haven't been to the chamber yet. You are the newbies. Yeah, sorry. So, all this is Greek to you. Uh, I mean, one? because apparently there's been some standoff in Parliament. There's NDC people sitting on their right and all of this, but you are a fresher, so you don't seem to want to comment on that. Well, uh, I think it's a game of numbers here. Is, uh, this business is not um, it's not rocket science. I think mm -hmm. every Ghanaian watching us understands the difference between majority and minority. We are four people here, so if we want to determine who we want to segregate ourselves and want to make a determination which part constitutes the majority and which part constitutes the minority. You just do a head count. And when you do the head count in terms of the caucuses in parliament, where there are always two caucuses, majority caucus and minority caucus, I think the Ghanaian people and yourself and all of us, including my uh, friends here, will attest to which caucus in this parliament will constitute majority. So I'm not sure there should be any hassle about it. I think it's a pretty straightforward matter. We do a head count. There are 275 members of parliament. One of them is out by an order of the court, an order of a court of competent jurisdiction, the high court of our country. 
is injuncted one of the members of parliament elect from holding himself out as a member of parliament. So we now have 274 members of parliament elect. So if you want to determine which caucus constitutes majority or which caucus constitutes minority, you do a simple head count. I believe um, with the greatest of respect, Honorable Suini's 15-year-old or 10-year-old son can, can actually settle this matter for us. So that's the majority the, caucus the, the publicly stated position of the Formula MP stand or must it be articulated here? So assuming tonight he says he's going to be with the NDC, even with Asin not not there, that still has an even number, right? So my, my point is, should do we have to wait for the the process to start for the majority to be determined, or do we know already? Well, I believe that um, the clerk would say, I presume so, and at that stage, the caucuses will be formed. And I believe it will, will have, there will be no doubt, there will be no ambiguity whatsoever as to which caucus constitute a majority and a minority caucus. So I think this is a bit premature. Um, when the clerk takes his seat, I'm sure it will become very evident which side of the house constitutes the, the majority and the minority. And I have no doubt that it will be the MPP side. And no can you confirm if all your MPs are here? Well, all of us are here. All of us are here, without doubt. Why shouldn't we? We are elected to, to come and represent our people, so we all have to be here. We are all here. The Formula MP is, 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 is stated clearly and done so publicly that he intends to caucus with the MPP, and he will do so today. So the MPP will form the majority side of this parliament, this eighth parliament. There's absolutely no difficulty about that. And if you came to the popular vote also, the MPP won the election with more than 500,000 votes. The MPP had 51% of the vote, 51 plus percent of the vote. That is a clear majority. The NDC since 2000 has never marshaled up to 51% of the popular vote in Ghana. They've never. Professor Mills governed with a majority of 40,000 votes. President Mahama himself governed with 50.7%. With the exception of President Rawlings, no NDC presidential candidate has garnered up to 51% of the popular vote. President Akufuado won these elections with 51% of the popular vote. That is a decisive, clear majority. NPP's majority but, in Ghana. But you are aware that the, the parliamentary race was much closer. So, I'm talking about so, the presidential I race. Know, I know. I'm just saying that, yes, you, you made a point about the presidential history. But this is an unprecedented no, parliamentary but. situation. Let's, let's we've, never seen, let's see we've never seen a parliament this close. Bernard, Bernard, the parliamentary close, not close, this, that. In 2000 election, in the 2000 election, President Kofor governed with a majority of six seats or so. That, that was the case. I think six or four seats. dead heat. No, that's, that's not in doubt. President Mills himself in 2008 governed with a slim majority i think a majority of 10 or so yes he governed with a majority of about 10. if you talk about the parliamentary elections in my view the parliamentary results were close but nonetheless the mpp still managed to constitute majority that is a fact a majority of one is majority mm. majority simply means one group is more than the other more than by one seat, yeah, more than by ten seats. But I said also, and I want to repeat that, that in the presidential election, there are yeah. two elections that are held in the general election I know in Ghana. That. I'm saying that Parliamentary and presidential. The president in the presidential in the election, election President Akufuado won with more than 500,000 votes, 51%. That, that, that's clear majority. The, the president appeared more conciliatory than you are sounding, in the sense that when he gave the speech, he, he sought to suggest that there has to be some sort of working together. You seem to be towing a different line from my reading of your tone. Bernard, there should be, we, we have to work together. We must build consensus. But the president was absolutely emphatic and unequivocal. He said yesterday that he resoundedly won the elections. No, that's, that's not fact. in doubt. I'm talking about what. <laughs> but that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, oh. Yeah, but the, <laughs> the fact that you, you won elections in a landslide or decisively mm. will not prevent you from working together with people. We have to work together with all manner of persons Quick in Ghana. Yes. But, but the fact has to remain that the president won that election. That, that fact has to be stated. Honorable we don't have to derogate it. Uh, if you are going through memory lane, he tried to suggest or indicate that uh, the MPP presidential candidates have been winning 50 plus something. President Mills did 50 point something, John Mama did 50 point something. If you can go further down the lane, memory lane, 
92 Rollins president, Rollins of NDC, got 57 or 58 percent. Four years later, 1996, he also got 57 percent. MPP presidential candidate have never got to 55 percent, not to talk about 57 or 58. So if it is squaring up and the rest of them, then it is the NDC party that has done better in the past as far as presidential percentages are concerned. Bernard, I, so think, that, I think that we need to um, remember that those of us who have the opportunity to occupy offices or be on platforms like this do not constitute Ghana. Those who have the opportunity to wear the robes and become judges do not represent what we all love and cherish. That is the freedom and justice that we enjoy in this country and the democracy that we have all committed to serving. It is important that we understand that we are privileged in our positions, but the public, the public continue to judge each of us and collectively. And so when we talk about the rule of law, let us not talk about it as if to suggest that it is about who is smarter than the other or who, 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 who is a game master. Let's be careful because you see our legitimacy and authority comes from the people's acceptance of it to be so. Our legitimacy and our authority comes from the people's acceptance for it to be so. So when we begin to talk of the rule of law as if it is about who is smarter, who is mightier, who is more wise. And it's not about what the re people really expect the law to do for them. We should be very careful. So we live in this country. There are similar cases presented before judges. To injunct the Techiman Sab, to injunct Hohoi. The argument was clear that the people will be served wrongly if an injunction is granted but the merit of the matter will be looked at later that for me was logical because you see the people want the law to serve them and so if the law argued that putting an injunction on those mps will deny them representation even before the substance of the matter is looked at was not fair i thought it was a fair judgment even though it went against my interest as a party so when you fast forward and you have you know another judge sitting on a similar case ignoring the need for representation for the people i think even if you have to explain for people to understand the difference you should not be boastful about it and arrogant about it because it is offensive and it is annoying oh really trust me let us be very careful that the people do not begin to lose the confidence that they have in the rule of law we have established in this country. It is the only thing we have. In fact, the biggest selling point of Ghana is peace. It is the biggest selling point. And so let us not toy with it. So for us in the NDC, we have sworn to defend the constitution of Ghana by all legitimate means. By all legitimate means. And so as I told you earlier, we know that the electoral commission declared 275 members of parliament to represent the people of ghana those people deserve representation until so otherwise today, you, are, you are referring stated. to the principle but i'm sure you know that every case has a different substance that's why i said similar i didn't say the same i agree i'm just trying to point that out as well because right. on the public platform right. so whereas all four cases appear the same People went with different issues. And I'm not justifying, I'm just saying to you that. So, for example, in the uh, Asin North case, it was a citizenship issue. Right. Whereas, for example, in the Hochwe case, it was about the rights of people to vote. To vote. Right. Techiman South was about the way the coalition was done. Right. right. So, we also need to point out that those differences but, 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 right, would but, inform but, 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 the way the judges conclude on the cases. Well, if, if well, I'm what I'm saying, so that is why, yeah, that, is why, yeah, Bernard, that, Bernard, that is why I concluded by yes. saying that even if we want to explain yes. to the people to understand what, where the difference may be coming from, let us not sound as if we are smarter. Let us not sound as if we are mightier. Let us not sound arrogant about it. Let us mm -hmm. be very careful that at every point in time we carry the people with us let, 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 when we make these decisions. 
Because when the people begin to disrespect those decisions, we will have no, no country to serve and no country to protect, but, but which uh, is very dangerous. Ben, I, I'm a bit surprised because um, the principal, my friend, my very good friend, Sweeney, is just enunciated. The matters they took to Hohoi, the Hohoi High Court, where you went by an ex-party motion to seek an injunction to injunct Honorable Amewu from holding himself out as member of parliament. Your own party went to Hohoi High Court with an ex-party ex motion, with a motion which was not on notice. In other words, nobody was there to argue in the opposite direction to your argument. You go to court, you don't serve notice on anybody, and very uh, palpably con con in, contra in contradiction to the principle he's just tabled. You, they, you went to Hohoi High Court and sought an injunction to injunct Honorable Amiru from holding himself out as member of parliament elect for Hohoi. What happened to representation? What happened to the so-called substance? What happened to the merits of the matters had not been gone into? When you went with an ex-party motion and sought an injunction to prohibit Amewu from holding himself out as member of parliament, if Amewu had not gone to the Supreme Court to quash that judgment, this principle you've just enunciated, that principle would have prevailed in the case of Amewu in the Hoho High Court. I think you don't get it. No, no, I'm, I I'm just think, making no, the point. I, I get you, don't get Sweeney. I don't, you the don't point get I'm making it. is that, I, I get you. It is Sweeney. the judgment. Let me, let me just finish. No. You, you are making the point that until we get into the substance of a matter, we should not um, deny people representation. We should not deny people representation. You went to Techiman. You went to Techiman High Court and sought to injunct Martin, Honorable Martin, from holding himself out as member of parliament. So that principle is something that you have already applied. The principle that people but I think can. Point is that people, in all three cases, the judge well, that I'm getting there. was consistent. I am getting there. That let's allow I, the I, people to I, serve I, I, until we get to the substance. So I'm getting there. A apart from a single. I'm going to speak to that. That's the second point. The second point is that every case and its merits, as you rightly put it, Bernard, every case and its peculiar circumstances, the matters which were urged upon the Hohoi High Court are different from the matters which were urged upon the Techima High Court as they are different from the matters which were urged in the Asin North case. I believe the Asin North case, in my view, my respectful view, was a close and sharp situation, was a clear-cut situation. The law is very clear. You cannot be a member of parliament if you hold dual citizenship. But have you established that? Ho hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm making a point. Hold on, hold on. That was that is a substantive case that has been made. That is the that is a substantive that is a substantive pleading before the court. It is on the basis of that that the injunction was sought for. But for me, that is not even the issue. The fundamental issue is for me to associate myself with Honorable Sweeney that we all have to protect the rule of law. And the way to protect the rule of law is that myself and him and our senior honorable advocate, we cannot sit here and determine the merits or otherwise of judgment. When judgments are, are given or rulings are given and you are dissatisfied, like in the case of Honorable Amewu, you appeal. You appeal. So the High Court has made a determination on this matter, on this merits. If the defendant or a party in the suit is aggrieved, what you do is to appeal. It is because we don't want people to take the law into their hands. Precisely so. That is why we all of us have agreed mm. that, 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 that in accordance with the tenets of rule of law, when there is an election dispute, you go to court to seek redress. Okay. You don't go on the street. And when the court gives a ruling and you are dissatisfied, you appeal. So I think there's absolutely nothing wrong Fair with enough. asking us to. I need to announce. It's in accordance with the rule of law. So it's um, 10 minutes past 11. In the next 20 minutes, Duke Mensah Pope is going to take over for the countdown to midnight. And he's going to have a different panel. Hopefully Sky and Paul will still be here because the seventh parliament will be dissolved at midnight then the real action begins so we have some 20 minutes to wrap up what we're doing here and then duke and his team will take over and take us to crossover so this is a different crossover this is crossover from seven to eight so please grab more coffee you're going to have to stay with us because sky is here paul is still here the whole team is here sixus and co are here so in the next 20 minutes we're going to start our countdown to the swearing in so i just wanted us to wrap up on this and just yeah. go quick back to yeah. what we should expect when you guys go back there because right. that's what the viewers are interested in yeah. so let's deal with this as a last piece. yeah so bernard i was just saying that i don't think my brother sami got me when i made my point earlier 
the point I made about the principles that, est that was established by the judges is not my principle. It wasn't the NDC's principle when we sought an injunction. It was a principle established by the, the, by the judiciary and communicated to the NDC in both cases that those people deserve representation. It was not their doing that the merit of the case that we want to be looked into uh, came about. So those people should be represented until the merit of the case is looked into. It is not my principle. It is a principle established by the judiciary. But you see, when I talk about the games also and being smarter and mightier, you see, we all know that indeed, when you are dissatisfied with a case, you have options like an appeal or stay of execution. Now, what were we told today by the lawyers of the Asinov, you know, uh, 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 MP. MP elect? There, there, there seemed to have been a deliberate plan to prevent his lawyer from, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? Filing a stay, of, filing a, a stay of execution. Okay. Clearly, how? Because Was it a time the, issue? No. Like what happened? No, according to the lawyer who I have spoken to and many have heard, mm -hmm. they, when they got to the office that was supposed to receive the stay of execution, they anticipated this ruling and so they prepared for a stay of execution. When they got to that office, they were told the officers had locked up even before 3 p.m. and was at South Pond for a program. Oh, really? Is this That's why I talk word? about being yeah. smart Bella. with the law. The people know when we do Can these we things, this? they know. And then again, when you want to have majority in parliament to choose a speaker, a speaker you know you will need two thirds majority to remove, but you can have a simple majority to choose. And you play these games. Don't think the people do not know. And that is not what the people expect from the rule of law. No, I, That's the I, point I, I make. I'm that we confused. need to be careful. When we have these privileged positions and tend to act smart and mightier, the people know. And when they lose confidence in that rule of law, because they think we are playing games with it, they will lose confidence in that and it will affect all of us. Ma, so, Ma is, it not, is it not our responsibility to explain to them yeah, that, that, that the way Bernard, the law works, it's, it's, it's exactly, possible this Bernard, can happen? Bernard, is that not our job as Bernard, privileged is, people to do this? It is our job, but it is also, it is not our job to play those games. Which games? Okay. The games that seek, for example, to Bernard. ensure that a member of parliament is injuncted even before the merit of the case is is considered but that's a so that judge. even that's a if he ruling. is pronounced not guilty in future that, that's if he's pronounced judge. not guilty and he's supposed to represent the Asino people his, the effect of his vote today would have been lost no no mm. but better, better if i may the just make it of his so, vote so you're saying that it's irreparable, have been lost. irreparable damage, it's irreparable no. damage. that no, would be no. done not only to the no. Asino people Senior. but to the people of ghana because the people of ghana would have been stuck with a speaker that perhaps we wouldn't have had no, but, but you if see, he was allowed to vote, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are now in the merits of the case. Bella, but I don't the, know whether the, we can. Um, first, of all, first of all, first of all, Honorable Sweeney, senior, and, and you know better, senior Avoka. One high court, Honorable Avoka, Bernard, you know that Honorable Sweeney, one high court decision, ruling or reasoning, is not binding on another high court, and and the big man here will attest to that. A court of appeal decision will bind on a high court. A, a Supreme Court decision will bind on a high court. So the fact that Techima Saf, that is granted that what he's saying is even correct. Techima Saf, uh, 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 Techima High Court is given a certain and reason. It, it, it was a different court. It, it wasn't a Techima court. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a but court the in a different town. The principle is that one high court, one division of a high court decision or reasoning is not binding on another high court decision or reasoning. Yeah, that, and, and the matters of injunction are discretionary. And therefore, the totality of the circumstances must be put into account. He used the word irreparable damage. The judge will have to take all the factors into account. And I, I, I want to believe that these high court judges we have, Techiman, Hohoi, uh, Asen, Nov, are all responsible people. And you, you are tempted to make that point to him. What we don't have to do is to bastardize the court is to lessen the confidence the population have in the court because that is actually the bedrock that's the foundation of the rule of law it is because we cannot resolve issues based on jungle tools survival of, of so who is strong street 
a resolution of dispute. That is why we have court. That's why we have the rule of law. That is why if you are dissatisfied, you think somebody should not be sworn in as a member of parliament, you go to court and then you pray before the court, you argue but before the court, the and for the court the to make that decision. To, and I'm saying to, to you, to, I am saying to you that Ademusa Kandi, Ademusa Kandi was thrown out of this parliament. It was the same court that threw him out of this parliament. The former MP himself, <laughs> at a point, was, was asked out of this parliament. Decisions were taken in this parliament. Are you no sure decisions. You, you vote for you by the no, way. no, hold on. I'm <laughs> saying, I'm just giving the, the principle know, that the principle yes, that we would have yes. elected a speaker. Yes, I agree with you. Okay, let, 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 let me conclude on. Let me just yes. conclude in a, in a minute. Yes. The principle that we elect a speaker today without the representation of Asenov, which is the point I'm saying is not tenable because decisions have been made here where members of parliament have been thrown out, and those decisions have been binding. So whatever decision that is taken today will be binding. We all must invest in the rule of law. And indeed, it is a court of competent jurisdiction which has taken this decision. And as okay. MPs elect, the we should respect the court. We should not, the senior. We should not has, bastardize the court. He has six terms. This is your first to term. And you are we are not in parliament, you know yes, that. I know, but I am using the rules <laughs> yes. here. So you have the final word on this. Yeah. Um, we close? Admittedly, Honorable uh, Abu Jinepo is right when he talks about, or when he says that uh, the high court judgment is not binding on the similar high court. That is true. But it is also the principle that one high court decision persuades his brother high court, another high court elsewhere yeah. in the country. That's it's persuasive. Yeah. It's not binding, but it's persuasive. In this case, he should have taken judicial notice of the rulings given by his previous two or three other judges who have declined to grant an injunction because they will be, at the end of the day, they will be priving not just the MP, but the whole constituency of parliamentary representation. That's the first one. And the second one is that these are allegations that are not yet proven. Don't continue referring to second day, honorable second day and other case because he was here. There was no interim injunction against him. It was he was in parliament representing Boko Central until the final determination of the case that he was thrown out. So if this was the final determination of the case they had thrown out as in uh, North MP, we wouldn't have had anything to complain about. All right. But the facts are mere allegations yet. They have not yet been proven. So mm. why do you Let's move away him? from that. Yes. I have a final question for you. But, but we are not judges, you know. Your, your, mm. your friend Bagmin will be on the ballot. That's right. Are you confident he would win? Well, anybody who goes to election is confident that he will win. Have you reached out to MPs on the other side to appeal to their conscience to vote for Bagmin? Uh, I have just come from my constituency. I've not had the opportunity to do so, as but a, I will not be surprised. Caucus, not yeah, as a caucus, I expect that they would have been able to reach out because it's one house, and the speaker or deputy speaker and rest of them are going to preside on the two sides of the house, the minority and the majority. So I think that um, All right. the two caucuses would have approached each other. All right. are trying to I, hear, I hear some noise yeah, in the that. chamber, so okay. they have to go. Yeah, thank you can, you, can you show us what's happening on the floor whilst we... Papa Bay, the ye, na Ghana for ye, na no, yet you at home. The second is still what? 20, 40 minutes to uh, midnight, so we, we don't have the dissolution yet. So we, we want to find out what's going on on the floor. Okay, so Duke is not in the chamber yet, but. There, there was a bit of noise earlier. Sky, I don't know if you were eavesdropping on the chamber when you went out. They, they seem to have settled them. The NDC is still on the right. And the MPP is still on the left. So, what would typically be going on at this time? Because, what are they doing? Why are they sitting there? What are they doing, Sky? Well, so, um, you know that the time is getting closer and closer to midnight. Four. So, at the stroke of midnight, uh, you would expect that... Um, um, the old parliament, which is the current parliament, would dissolve as a matter of time. And then proceedings would then begin for the new one to be, you know, sworn in. So the, ch the chairperson for that ceremony will be the clerk, and he will call the gathering. Of and one so, so they are sitting down waiting for the clerk. Exactly. For, so, you know. so they are going to be, but it looks like we have a full complement now because. The, the, all the seats are filled now. Yeah. So it looks like the MPP is also in there now. Yeah, it does seem that their numbers are in now. Yeah. yeah. Will they ask the NDC to move from their seats or they would... What's going to happen? 
You see, they, it, or they will do until the speaker is elected. You see, so that's why some people want to play by the rules to say that well, when the authority of the speaker is represented by the introduction into the house of the maze, which symbolizes or embodies the authority of so the, when the maze comes in, yeah, that, that, exactly. Then so, it becomes a, exactly so that at that point, if the speaker is elected. The speaker has the authority. But there's a bit of uproar on the floor. What's going on? Uh, maybe they, someone... Hey, is it a fight? Yeah, yeah, that's right. They are dragging someone, pushing someone. Wow. Uh, a lady is being... Uh, yeah. yeah. What's going Kasua, on? Kasua, uh, How are Kums Yeah, that's right. Uh, How are Kums is... So, uh, viewers, these are live pictures from the floor. Um, it looks like a loud argument. We haven't seen any blues yet. So thankfully, I mean, we've seen in other countries people throwing shoes and things. Those things don't happen here. But we see a lot of aggressive gesticulation. There's a lot of, and I don't know if COVID protocols have been observed, but that's a Not different at conversation. Not clearly, it's been um, thrown to I, the I, dogs. I, uh, Fred, what's happening? We are, we are crossing back to Duke. Duke, Duke Mensah, what's happening? Duke, go ahead, what's happening? So we, we are bringing you live pictures. Duke will tell us what's happening on the floor and this is not parliament here this is just the, cha the chamber but it's not really constituted so these are mps elect rehearsing for the next four years so it's like dress rehearsal yeah. uh, duke if you can hear me just go ahead well duke can't hear me but but john john yeah. kuma you just came from this place what's happening here yeah, it's, it's to do with the sitting arrangements still uh, arguing about the sitting yeah, arrangements sitting arrangement. and, uh, the minority has taken over the position of the majority. I mean, okay. they're supposed to sit on the left of the speaker, but they insist to sit on the right. I mean, it's, it's a setup by the NDC Hello, to provoke an unnecessary situation. Hello. <laughs> yes, Duke, 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 go ahead, we can hear you. So there is a violent confrontation here between two members of parliament. Okay. As I speak to you, yes, two members of parliament, Archie Befi, that is new MP elect for New Job in South, and uh, John, John Jinapo, that is MP for Yapekuso. So that is what degenerated. And I can see Honorable Minta Akando right now pushing and shoving um, the Honorable MP for Abetifi, Brian Echampo. So there was an attempted, some sort of a false takeover of a seat on the majority side. And that resulted in the trading of words, stamping of tables, stamping of feet on the ground. And it looks like everything is going haywire here. Uh, so, on the floor so of the house. Fee, NPP, NP for New Job in South. Yes, and, New Job in South. And who that is Michael Lodge? Michael Lodge Beffy. And John Jinapo. And John Jinapo. That's how it started. Over which seat? Before, which seat were they fighting over? They were fighting over one of the front seats. And what is our concern and the other? What are they doing there? <laughs> so they, it looks like right now it's some sort of a free for all. Others are trying to make peace. Others are trying to, uh, you know, stoke the flames. Uh, and okay. now at the and now at the entrance of Honorable Amewu, there are shouts of there are the shouts that are coming in. When they initially entered, they started uh, chanting and taunting and making those shouts. And at so the entrance just again, and the yes, shouting Amewu. proceeded. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, yes. So that is that's that is what is happening here on the floor of the house. Uh, and right wow. now. Yes, so Honorable Brian Echampon, nobody knows if he's trying to make peace or not. Uh, the Honorable uh, Kennedy Japon has also entered. Wow. He's trying to cool down. Yes, Kennedy Japon just entered. He's trying to cool everybody down. Yes, he's trying to cool. Uh, he's, he's right now in between uh, Kletu Savoka, who just entered, oh, and then uh, one, one, one of his colleagues. So uh, there are all sort of, and uh, now they are singing Arise Ghana Youth, the National Youth Anthem right now. Who, who is, is singing? What, is it the NDC or MPP? Who is singing this? This is the NDC. This is the NDC. The NDC caucus singing the National Youth Anthem. While the members of the majority move in, uh, I can also see the marshal, the deputy marshal in the mix. He is officially responsible to keep the order wow. in parliament, in security. And he's here together with his deputy. Uh, are, uh, so Honorable Chebef is still he's still stamping the chair, he's still stamping the tables. Nobody knows what John Jinapo told him. Nobody knows the kind of exchange of words that took place. The Honorable Member of Parliament also for Asne Akroso Manso is also there with his wow. mask also yes, speaking and then shouting and then of course there's also the other Honorable Member as well. There's also Frida Prempe 
and then OB Amwa. Wow. As well as uh, the Honorable Howard Kumsin. They are, are, they, are they arguing or they are just joking? Is, are they angry or what? What? what is, I can't see from here. What's Some are trying to make peace. Others are arguing and hurling insults and assaults to to other to the other members. Wow, this is serious. So tempers are high. Very very serious. Something that is a spectacle. Something that has never been more or less witnessed. The last time the house came close to this was when uh, the honourable Ayariga was asked to apologise before the house. That's when honourable there was some sort of a near fisty cuff. Between Honorable Ali Dumaiga, Doma Central, um, Doma West MP, and Sam George, MP for Ningo Pram Pram. That's the last time something like this you know, wow. happened. But, 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 but we can say that because this is not parliament duly constituted, this is just a, a, a group of MPs elect who happen to be on the floor of the chamber. The yes, speaker is are, not there, the mace is not there, but this is not good for the, the viewing public, I believe. That at all. They don't expect the elected this leaders is, to be this is not the kind of in this way. This is not the kind of spectacle uh, Ghanaians who are proud of their democracy and of course the international public would want to see on the floor of parliament just moments before midnight when the new parliament will be inaugurated. And we have 35 minutes to go. That means we have a long way to go. If, if what we've seen so far is anything to go by, this is going to take a very, very long time. <laughs> yes, it is. It's going to take... Now, Honorable Kwabna Donko has also lost his... He's also lost his school. He's the one changing worse. Yes, Kwabna Donko is changing worse with the Honorable Howard Kumsin. He took trading of words, tirade, trade of words. And, and, and the Honorable Brian Echampon is, uh, 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 is, is trying to make peace. The Honorable uh, Dokuya Esiama, MB oh, for Ekropon, and Piyabem North has also joined in. Trading West is Honorable So Howard Kumsin is in the velvety so, uh, dress or beige dress. Dokuya is in the purple. And then there are gentlemen in white. Yes. In front. That's Brian Echampon in the white fugu trying to yeah, calm so, down people. And then Kwabna so yes. Donko was in the Kente on the left. Yes, they are, they are left. Yes, uh, shouting, wow. shouting. And, and, and uh, are you, Dr. Uefri has also joined in. Oh, Lord. Dr. Uefri has also, has also joined in. And the new the new boy from Old Tafo, that is uh, Echo of Vincent Oh, he's, he's also it. passing by. Yeah, so passing by quietly and also hailing some tirades. <laughs> so it's actually getting interesting now. Very, very interesting. I now. can see uh, it looks like now it looks, a kufu yes, in, in a, yes, a kente dress. Yes, yes, yes. Speaking uh, to uh, a couple yes, of MPs. Yes, he's there's Kweku Kwatin there. There is also uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament for Vijasia Sokori, Dr. You are free. It looks like he has succeeded in, in trying to make peace and getting some of his their colleagues but, but to go dude, back to the city. Surprise that most of these people are friends. These people work together on committees, they know each other so. Are they just putting yes. up a show and act for us, or are they actually very well, angry? Just a few moments ago, I was in the cafeteria, and they were just talking to each other, slapping each other, and congratulating each, congratulating each other. But it looks like just as if they enter the chamber, when they enter the chamber, the atmosphere has changed. It has actually changed. Just, just a few moments ago, they were at the um, cafeteria chit-chatting, chop, chop, getting on some chops. And of course, right now, the, the leader himself, the leader of the house, as, as, he, as he emerged. Who is the gentleman wherever, in Kente uh, he, who is being restrained? That is the Honorable Eugene Boachianchi, MP for Subin. He for also, Subin. yes, he just entered and he's in some sort of a, he just shoved the Honorable Jaja. Uh, the Honorable Jaja. Jaja MP for Ayawasu, yes. And uh, Ayawasu, Ayawasu is in blue trying to calm him down. Yes, yes. Are you oh, oh, trying oh, to calm him? has moved away from the scene. Yes, they've moved it, it, it looks like and things are... The Honorable Osei Chemen just entered the house. But they are laughing now. Yes. Yes. So, so it, is it way they are fooling or what's going on there? Because it looks like they are right just now laughing. the tempests are coming down now. It, 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 and there's also another thing right now. Yes, Inu Safuseni looks, looks ready to fight. But, uh, Interesting. Inu Safuseni? Ebi Efuseni. Ebi Efuseni. Ebi Efuseni. Yes. Uh, he's, 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 he's gotten into some war of words with Brian the Champon. Wow. Yes, right so, so now. Yes. This, this, this and it's is getting interesting. They are trying to push him away. So that wow. is what is actually happening. Nobody knows why. And, and in the background is Steven Amwa, MP elect for Shaiso. Wow. So they've managed to calm ABF Husseini down. MP for Bole Bambo Yusif has managed to move him away wow. from the aisle onto his seat. Very, very interesting scenes here. Have you seen the MP for Formina? 
the formula MP, I have not cited him as yet. But now I look gradually, maybe because of where I'm standing, because he's a, he will be have to be on the in the corner between the, the NDC and the MPP MPP. and the NDC. Yes. So but you have not seen him yet. What about yeah. the MP elect for um, Asin North? We are told because he's here. Have you seen we him? Are told, uh, we are told he's here, but because of the masks, you haven't seen really him personally. See the face, yes. Okay, I see Haruna and a few people. Henry Corti and Co. trying to resolve. Uh, KMS on the phone, Sky. Yeah. What on earth is this? Duke, stay on. We'll come back to you, Sky. What, what is this? Well, uh, clearly, I mean, it tells you that um, there are entrenched positions. And when it gets to this point, um, people want to show that they can take things very far. So that's what you're seeing. This is the first time you're seeing a side decide that, look, this is where I'm sitting, regardless of what the numbers say. Now, we know the po it is all a, a question of the politics of it. Mm. What do they say is the position as in a true reflection of the votes? They believe that they have the majority. They believe that, you know, the courts have been used to take away at least one member elect. You understand? Some would say that, well, you triggered the process when you went to Hawkeye, went to Ho to do what you did. But ultimately... It does seem that we are not seeing leadership okay. being shown by both sides of the house. Look, mm. this is a serious institution, the third arm of government, the, the second arm of government, a powerful institution that should be sending the right signal to citizens of the republic. People mm. should be able to hold their members of parliament in high regard. And in fact, they do that. But if you do the kinds of things that we are seeing, it sends the wrong signals to people who to are the voting. public. Exactly. So it's not a good spectacle exactly. for, for the public. So let's respect the rules. So but we can see now mm -hmm. Harun Idrisu speaking to Chairman Sabon So Duke, if you are still there, it looks like sanity has prevailed now. Sanity will be movement of people across the aisle. When the se session starts. Exactly. So for now, the so what what I gather it happens to be that the NP, MPP side initially wrote their names on specific seats. Exactly. As in who should sit where, blah, blah, blah.